Yeah, welcome back everybody to our next webinar. I'm really happy to welcome you all. Uh, with me now is Dr. Georg Weingrill from Binder & Co. Um, and he is going to talk a little bit about their uh, sensor-based uh, sorting solutions. Uh, he is the product manager for these kinds of plastic and metal sorting solutions but yeah i don't want to tell you too much about it before we start one more thing thank you all for being here i can only say it say so much uh, we've got i think over 2500 registrants for the different webinars in the week uh, thank you for being here for being a part of erec this year the first time mr weingrill it's your stage uh, please tell us all about it Thank you very much, Mr. Bott, for this kind introduction. Um, my name is Georg Weingrill, as he told you before. Um, I'm the product manager for our sensor-based sorters at Binder & Co. Um, welcome and thank you that you decided to share your time with, with me so I can present to you our company today. Um, yeah. So the title is Individual Sensor-Based Sorting Solution for Highest Purity and Maximum Recovery for Recyclables in the Processing of Metal and Plastic Waste. Uh, but one after another, I will start with uh, explaining what is Binder. Binder is an Austrian company. Its headquarters is located in, in the southern part near Dukrats. The town is called Kleister. Uh, uh, yeah, we are a mechanical engineering company. We have 125 years of experience. So last year we celebrated this anniversary in a big festival. We have around 383 employees. The turnover from 2019 was around 113 million euros. So you have some figures. So you maybe Get a little feeling how big we are. Uh, as you can see here on the right side, there's a little map showing our almost exact location. Um, what is the portfolio of Binder? In which processes are we in? Which industry do we uh, sell machinery to? Um, it's mainly processing technology, meaning like mining, iron and steel industry, mineral industry, and also construction materials industry. Another division is the environmental technology, mainly in recycling. We are well known for the glass plants we sold all over the planet. And the third division is um, the packaging, packaging technology. So this is a subsidiary of Binder, the static Binder game. Well, what kind of machinery, machinery do we build? Um, there's one subsidiary of Binder called the Comic Binder, which is part of the group. They are making commutation, uh, commuting machinery, like chop breakers and so on. Then we have screening machinery, we have wet processing machinery, and thermal processing. This is also a division called the Buchtung Game Beham. And then there's the division where I'm working for is the sorting, sensor-based sorting division and mainly in the environmental technology. And then, as I mentioned, we have packaging and palletizing uh, equipment as well. On the right side, you see a map with an overview of uh, an example of implemented project all over the globe. And you see we are a worldwide active company. Our core markets are Europe and the Americas, but also Asia and Russia. So proceed, um, we consider ourselves to be a very innovative uh, company. Why is that? So I can just show you some example. We won the Primus Award in 2008. We won the Innovation Award in 2010, the Trigus Award in 2012, and 2018, the USA Biz Award. Uh, in total, we won 10 awards in the last 12 years. That makes like 0.83 awards per year and following to that rule again we won the innovation award the Sonderpreis 2012 um, from the Trend company. So let's come to our clarity product line. The clarity is uh, 
name of our product line of the sensor-based sourcing system for recycling industry. It is a revolutionary sorting system for all types of waste. Why revolutionary? Because we were one of the first companies who ever built such machinery. This was in the early 90s of the last century. In principle, you can use those machines in, for every bulk material which must be sorted. But our machinery is mainly focused on, let's say, four um, fields. First is the class, which we are mostly uh, we most known of. Then for metals and we and e scrap waste. Also for plastic and packaging waste sorting and construction and demolition waste sorting. But there's also wood and um, MSW, which can be sorted with our machinery. I will not go into details how a uh, sensor-based sorter is constructed. I, I think there have been enough, have been enough presentation to show you how it works. We have the sensor, we have the um, ejection system, and that's the principle. And it was shown to the customers uh, enough, I think. So, what kind of sorters do we have? First of all, as you have seen, we have the shoot sorter. Uh, it, uh, we produce them in a two-way or three-way system. The sorting width is around up to around 2,000 millimeters. Infit grain, depending always on the type, but it's usually from one millimeter to approximately 300 millimeters. The shoot type is mainly used in mining and recycling. Then we have the belt sorter, also two and three ways. We put them up to 2,800 millimeters sorting width, starting at 1,000 and then 1,400 and 2,000. The feeding grain size is again one to around 300 millimeters, can also be applied in mining and recycling sorting tasks. Then we have the XRT, so the X ray transmission belt sorting system. It is also a two way machine, it, we built them up to 1,000 millimeters. Grain size starts at around five millimeter, uh, millimeters where it can be sorted and up to 150 millimeter. This depends on the input, can be less and can be more. What's so special about it, if you compare it to a belt sorter, is that it is shielded fully with leaded um, shields in the outside. So it's totally safe. There's no hazardous uh, radiation which can harm the operator. And then we have a very special machine called the multi-way. It is a belt sorter in principle, but it can uh, can be built with three ways, three products, four products, five products, or six products, depending on the customer's wishes. Um, we built them up to 2,000 millimeters, started 1,000, 1,400, and the feeding is usually the 3D fraction of light bake. Uh, packaging and plastic waste. So usually the grain size is between 40 to 350 millimeters, but I will talk in details about this system later on. I thought it might be a good idea to bring you some example where this type of machinery can be applied. The first example I want to present to you is in the sorting of cable scrap. Um, in this case, it is a realized project in Austria. Uh, the input into this machine was a shredded and pre-processed cable scrap. The pre-processing was yeah, comminution, uh, screening, density separation, magnetic separation, and eddy current separation. And after that, the material comes into our machine, as you can see at the flow sheet on the left side. And this is an inline solution, meaning it's a continuous process. And we solve this problem or this, this task by splitting this machine. And what's the advantage of this? You can have on one machine, one rougher stage and one cleaner stage. What's it, what does it mean? In the first stage, you try to get rid of the contamination with the minimum possible loss of valuables. And in the second stage, when you put again the material, which is the pass through, into the machine on the other side from the splitted um, chute, you can increase again 
the quality of the output to obtain a copper concentrate, in this case, uh, which has very great copper. Now, this is around 99.7% uh, of copper. And this defined purity gives a quite an advantage for the customer because he can sell this product directly to Barstock, the Halbzeug uh, Produktion. It doesn't need to be metallurgically speaking processed further, like smelting or leaching. And the solution with just one machine is perfect for upgrading outdated um, processes. Because we know that uh, the recycling industry demands ever higher purities of the product. So nowadays you need to be over 98% or something to get a good price. Yeah, another example would be again metal. In this case, um, we have a shredded uh, metal scrap, mainly consisting of aluminum copper concentrate. There's also a hammer milling before to get uh, to liberate uh, the intergrowth and the contamination like plastic and those things. So this is liberated and get rid of the, the coating. And the idea was to have a offline machine, a, so to say in a batch operation mode. In the first step, put the material onto the machine, it sorts out all contaminants regarding together to get a pure aluminum concentrate. The rest, which is now copper enriched, will be um, put again into this machine if you have an offline between, uh, offline operation. If you have an inline operation, of course, you would need a split machi machinery or a second machine. And then you clean up the copper from other contaminants like gray metals and so on. And then you get two products with one machine, one other concentrate and one copper rich concentrate. And as you can see, this um, uh, sort of setting uh, in an offline process, in a batch process, gives the advantage of being very versatile regarding the breakability and especially for further sorting tasks. If something changed, I mean, small recycling companies often have to deal with varying input qualities with different types. So they're not producing the same product all the time. They have to change their processes, they have to adapt them. And with such a machinery in the offline process, you can adapt it really easy just by switching the recipes. The third and last example for metal sorting would be the sorting of and processing of sorber and stainless steel above industries. Um, imagine you have a typically metal recycling company where metal um, <clears throat> prep is shredded and screened and then uh, usually magnetic metals like steel, standard steel is removed by a magnetic separator and usually there's also uh, eddy current separator and then you get two products from the eddy current. One is the metal rich because the eddy current separates by the conductivity of its material. And the other one is a rubber stainless steel rich product. Uh, why does the stainless steel, while well, it's uh, uh, conducted, does not go into the, to the other product is because stainless steel has a lower ratio between conductivity and density. So it is not sorted out probably by the eddy current, relatively speaking. So. But if you have the stainless steel in the rubber concentrate, it's a um, loss of valuables. So how can you solve this? How can you address this issue? Um, is that, for instance, you can use a XRT with combination clarity. And the first run, you can put in the rubber stainless steel mixture. And since stainless steel has a much higher density, you can use the X-ray transmission properties and uh, sensing properties to detect metal and shoot this out and have a, your first product, the stainless steel. 
and a byproduct. The second one is a rubber. And in the second run, you can use the conductor fraction from the uh, eddy current separator, put that into the machine and use the low density of aluminum as a sorting criteria for your selectivity to sort out the aluminum. And there's your third product, the aluminum concentrate. What comes through is then the copper and copper alloy uh, and other metal rich product. And again, you can sort this because we have this uh, sensor fusion, the XRT with sensor fusion. You can use this property of copper and copper alloys that they have a reddish brownish color and use this property to sort out copper and copper alloys. So you get the fourth uh, product and the fifth. And in, so you have five products. So if I sum that up, we have one machine two types of inputs, the rubber and stainless steel, and the uh, aluminum, copper, and other metal switch uh, input, and you have three runs, and then you get five products out of just one machine. Stainless steel, rubber, aluminum, copper, and other metals. So, another example for sorting, but this time from uh, for plastic sorting, is how our multiway can be applied. The multiplier, as I told you, is a certain type of belt sorter. And yeah, sorting and recycling of plastic has become a major issue worldwide because of the um, contamination of the environment and, and problems with marine life and so on. So simple and good solutions are demanded. Binda addressed this with the construction of this machine. And let me pose that question. How many machines do you need, do you think do you need to get six products in line from, from one um, heap? One probably would say you would need five machines. But in this case, with this machine, you only need one. How is it possible? Well, you see on the left side this catch where you feed on the left side the material into the machine. and uh, special thing about this machine is that you have a perforated belt conveyor and the material is presented to the sensor on this conveyor. The sensor detects the type of polymer and the color of the, of the polymer and each object is recognized and then it's transported through the sorting chamber. And as you can see here, we have laterally, laterally arranged conveyor belts. You see the, the green arrows coming out there and below the perforated belt there are nozzles to shoot out the particles but in this case it's not like shooting out from the uh, parabola like in standard belt sorters but it's more like lifting them up onto the crisscrossing conveyor belt so for instance in the first place you can sort of sort of pt the second belt you can sort out PE in the next PP and then um, plastic coated paper um, cardboards and next would be maybe paper and other waste types for instance PS. So you can see you can produce at least six products with one machinery whatever you do afterwards you can maybe that's a finished product maybe you refine it but you have a, at least a pre-sorting but not only pre-sorting can be done, like for um, uh, supplementing picking station, but you can also use it for the for scavenger, scavenger stage after a whole process. So very often valuables, like some polymers or so, are lost because sorting capacity at peak times are not um, enough for sorting all the valuables out. So in the waste fraction there are still a lot of valuables valuables and they can be just put into one machine you cannot can um, add this to a whole process and again sort out the valuables without a, a huge need but a need to have a huge change of the whole process yeah and now uh, i also want to talk a little bit about 
um, screening machines. You may know that Binda is a global market leader for screening machines. They are known for the high efficiency and high quality of, of screening processes. The most known product is the BVTEC, which stands for Binda Vibration Technique. Um, especially, this is especially true for difficult to screen, to screen materials. In this case, we have more than 70 years of experience. Worldwide, there are around 3,500 BVTEX in operation. So what can you screen? Crushed sand with a high moisture, the same is true for coke or, or, or coal with um, high moisture or sticking material like sinter, but also for recycling materials like plastics or shredded metals and old wood chips or compost and glass. So there's a uh, very big um, field for application. How is the setting of su such a machine? Uh, we have the di dynamic screening mats. I will come to that afterwards. You have the circular or linear motion drive, and then you have the dynamically floating frame. This setting causes uh, alternating stretching and relaxing of the screen mats. In consequence, the material on the screen map is accelerated up to 50 Gs, and this leads to a dissolving of the clumpings, and this thing increases the screening performance because there's no clocking, and the fines also do not uh, pass over the screens. Uh, for optimal operation, it's, it must adjust just the masses, and you have a perfect working system. So what's so new about it? Well, the thing is, um, there was an innovative idea behind it. Um, therefore, I need to mention there is another type of screens, so-called resonance screen. How is this excited? You have this excenter drive, and there are coupled uh, frames, so the masses are balanced. So practically, there are no dynamic loads into the um, suspending structure. As a result, you also need a very low electric power. And if you combine this with a BVTEC screen, the flip flow system, as it is called, and the Oxfam ceiling, I didn't mention what it was, but it has, a, has us to do with not getting dirt in between the parts of the machinery. If you combine those two, you get the BVTEC E+. It was launched this year. It is a BVTEC with a static screen body. And you have very low electric power use and low dynamic loads, but at the same um, screening efficiency as you are used from the PVTEC screens, of the standard PVTEC screen. So your advantage, advantage is at a glance, um, very low power consumption, up to 65% less than the standard PVTEC. The weight is also less because it's a static system. It's, you can lower it up to 40% of the original weight. This is, of course, has an infect, the impact on lowering costs for the steel structure. Um, the adjustment of the vibration parameters is this time for this machine easily done by a frequency converter, so no mechanical adjustment. And still, you can have it stackable, meaning you can have it in a double or three tech care version. Right side, you see the picture of it. This is the result a very slim and compact machine. Yeah, coming to my almost last slide. Since this year, we do not only offer our clarity as a static or stationary machinery, we are now also available in a semi-mobile solution. Um, because our clarity are now integrated in the pool line, product line of line technology. On the left side, you see a cross section of our machinery. It's a belt sorter. You see the belt sorter on the left side. And here is the acceleration um, belt and the sorting chamber. What type of sense sensoric is available? It's the VIS camera, inductive sensor, and the X-ray transmission uh, sensor is also available. But for more information, please go to the booth of Line Technology GmbH, which is also present at this um, convention. 
just wanted to have it mentioned in my presentation. That leads me to my last slide. I just wanted to say we have a big R&D workshop with uh, testing facilities. We have on average more than 150 customer trials per year. For that, we have 25 laboratory machines and system. We can do mechanical processing, thermal processing, but also and especially sensor-based sorting. So if you're interested, do not hesitate to get in touch with us. Maybe you can send us the material. We are sure we find the best solution for your recyclables. So I'm at the end. Thank you very much for your attention. Any questions, um, please do not hesitate to ask. Thank you very much. Thank yeah, thank you for this presentation. Uh, we are all the wiser now, I believe, uh, when it comes to sorting solutions. Uh, I've got a few questions coming in from the chat. Um, and the first is about your multi-way system. Uh, can you say something about the throughput capacity and material crane size for the use of that? Uh, throughput, yeah. Um, sure, I have to add that it depends always on the material, but and the wanted quality which you want to have at the output. But we are throughputs um, talking about one, ma uh, one meter sorting with about between 1.5 to 2 tons per meter. This is a, a standard throughput which we can offer, um, especially for material which is as a grain size between 50 to 350 um, millimeters. All right, thank you. So I think I think we can uh, we can work with that. Uh, and for any more specific questions, I think uh, just contact you, and you will be able to give a specific answer depending on the special use case. Perfect. Mm, another question coming in is about the ah yeah uh, in your plastic sorting solutions. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm not sure if maybe you can answer that, but the questions about black colored plastics, uh, which which pose a problem apparently to to many sorting solutions. Can you say something about that? Did you do you have a solution for that, or what are your thoughts about that? So far, we have thoughts about it, but we have no solution. We found that there are some solutions on the market so far, not really. Satisfactory, satisfactory, satisfactory for yeah. us. Um, we, of course, we can detect that it is a, a black um, polymer, and we can say if, if it's a PET black polymer, then we can detect it. But for others, still, this um, blackening uh, additives like um, <clears throat> uh, carbon dust and so on, this. Uh, absorbs so much photons, so we can't get a straight and proper uh, signal for it to ensure a, a good classification of the particle. So, so far we cannot... Uh, yeah, of course, sure. Uh, so we give you a, a, a good solution for that. Sure, thank you, sir. sir. Thank you for, for that honest answer of yours. Um, I'm sure we will uh, you will find a solution soon <laughs> for that. Um, there's another question coming in regarding the BVTEC E+, whether it's possible to screen small pieces of glass from compost uh, coming, coming from MSW. Yeah. That should be possible, in my opinion. I'm not the expert in this field. Maybe uh, I'm not sure who is posing this question now. Maybe I can uh, kind of moderate now this to an expert and maybe they get in touch and to talk about details. But I know we have been doing trials with compost and glass and stones, sorting, uh, do screening them up. So probably this is possible, I'm quite convinced. Yeah, as they are coming in so specific questions, I would definitely forward uh, the the email addresses uh, along with the questions to you, so you can maybe maybe just forward those yeah. to the, the specific persons. Thank you uh, already. Sorry for the hard questions. We are both no here. Problem. I'm there for. 
<clears throat> All right, yeah, thank you so much. Mm. As there are no more questions coming in and I think our time's running up, I would love to give you a quick thank you for, for being here, for sharing your knowledge with us. It's been an honor and yeah, we look forward to having you again sometime. Thank you for being a part here. The last words, of course, are yours. Okay, Mr. Bot, thank you very much for the kind moderating this uh, presentation and for the assistance before the presentation. I'd like to mention that as well. It was a pleasure for me to present our company and yeah, I hope that some found some solution and they get in contact with us. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah, I would love to have you all head over to the booth of Binder and Co, uh, where I'm sure you will find further information as well as all the contact data. Again, uh, ask your questions as specific as possible and as deep as you want. And we will, uh, I'm sure they will find a solution for you as well. Thank you for being here. I would love to have you in our next webinar starting at 3 p.m. with Williger. And they are talking about what they do, especially in the waste management. Goodbye. Good afternoon to all of you. Thank you. Goodbye.